Legends tell of six Toa heroes who fought evil and faded away into history. But legends never die and they shall rise again. Now the Toa have returned to fight evil. United they stand, destined to find the masks of power in order to fulfill their duty to protect the island of Okoto. This is Bionicle Week. Day 4, Gali, Master of Water, and the Protector of Water. Hello, this is Sanat here, and welcome back to Bionicle Week. Today we'll be taking a look at Gali, the Master of Water, and the Protector of Water. We are on uh, the fourth day of this review series. Talking about the boxes is pretty much pointless outside of showing the really nice artwork. I... Do appreciate it, but as you can see, they're in the water region. They look really cool. I'd rather talk about the toys in the boxes. So, Gali's at 87 pieces, and the protective water's at 65. Moving on. So, here we have Gali, the master of water, who is our first $15 Toa we're looking at. Now, what is the difference between the $20 Toa and the $15 ones? Well, it's overall size. Uh, the $15 Toa are about the same height, uh, most then the heights vary between all the Toa, but they have less armor overall. They're a lot slimmer, um, and actually kind of works in their favor. Plus, they have silver armor instead of gold armor, which is why we have the silver Toa and the gold Toa, um, as I've been referring to them to them as for these reviews. Anyways, as you can see here, this is Gelly's little comic about stuff. Again, showing Red Skull Spiders. We still don't have any of those. Gelly came with a silver one. So anyways, Gali here is our female uh, Toa, which has a distinctly male voice in the online animation so far. And that did backfire quickly. But as you can see, Gali here looks really nice. The actual thinner mold works to create a more of a female look. And let's be honest, Toa of Water have not always looked female. In fact, they've never looked really female didn't know the character was female, you probably would have guessed it was a male. Um, which apparently the person doing the voices for the online animations thought it was. But from all we can see in the descriptions of the bios and such, this is still, uh, Gali is still female. Anyways, I like uh, little details like the additional shoulder pads up here. Uh, just gives it extra armor. And her articulation is quite nice. As you can see, the head moves quite a bit. Shoulders, elbows wrists, hips, knees, really deep knee with nice clear plastic, and ball jointed ankles. So the standard articulation for the Bionicle line. Now her mask is uh, kind of interesting because it doesn't really look like the original Gali's like water visor thing, uh, nor does it look like Gali Nuva all that much. Um, it's kind of a new design. I like that because uh, Onua, Kopaka, and Tahu all took direct inspiration from uh, their Generation 1 counterparts. Um, but it's nice to see this brand new mass design. What, what's basically a brand new mass design. Now, weapons! What does she have for weapons? First of all, this cool trident uh, made up of two swords and another blade. And that has two parts to it. And she also gets these really cool water fins. Uh, she is the toe of water, after all. The master of water. Um, so, you do get this going on here. And, much like Kopaka skis, gives her a little extra height. Um, works really well. I can get a lot of swimming poses pulled off. I mean, you can have her look up like this. Have her with the spear pointed forward. And you can have her kind of swimming. Uh, the articulation allows for swimming poses. Uh, which is super cool. Because the other two gollies we had, or the three gollies we had, couldn't swim very well. Um... Anyways, the uh, gear system I did forget to mention is just the one arm here, so she can swing her spear. She doesn't really hold anything else with the other arm, so that's fine. Um, you can see there's actually like four gears running in her chest, and I'll actually just pull the armor off here. Uh, you can see there's, there's, there's two gears in the front as well as in the back, which is kind of odd. Um, I don't really know why. Uh, it must be an engineering thing, but again, you can still pose her without too much issue. Uh, so, really cool overall, um, and that's about it, I mean, she gets the spear and two, uh, two fins, that's pretty much it for her weaponry, uh, but, as always, we have a golden mask of power included, I want to thank Bionicle for not making us hunt these down in 
blind packs of uh, Kenohi. That was nice. Uh, so we'll just remove her mask here, give her her golden mask, and we'll power up her weapon by removing the uh, fins off her feet. Sometimes having to pull the pegs with them because they sometimes go. One goes, none go. So once that's all done, uh, you're basically just going to reverse what's in her hand. So you just remove the top part of the spear and the bottom part. Put the bottom part on top. Put the top part on bottom. And then all you got to do is connect the fins like this. And now you've got this friggin' awesome axe. And I must say, it's a nice effect. Taking the fins and making them into a bladed weapon. But I will make a minor complaint. It is quite heavy, and it does cause her arm to fall. It's not because of the gears. It's because of the ball joint um, that causes the looseness. Because this axe is huge and heavy. In fact, let me back up the figure here and tilt the camera up so you can see how huge it is. It is taller than her. It is an awesome, impressive sight. And if you really wanted to pull off a dual-wielding pose, you definitely could. Um, it's, it's a little tricky, but I'm sure we can, sure we can do it. Let's just put that there and yeah, we'll do that. So you can have a dual wielding axe. Um, the problem with these hands not having a, uh, slot that can slide through, you can't have, uh, easy dual wielding, but it works well. The gear system works to, to move it. It is heavy though. And I must say her hips are super loose on mine. Um, I don't know if that's just a tolerance thing um, or it's just the way it was done. But her legs are a little bit loose, and it may be because of the weight of her weapon. Um, but golly's, golly's pretty cool. So here we have the Protector of Water. Now the Protector of Water actually looks quite tall. I believe it's the tallest of the Protectors because it has the added uh, length in the arms. Um, maybe in a hopes to give it a better look, uh, of a more female look. But as you can see, there is clear plastic uh, on the legs and arms. Looks really nice. The armor's clear plastic. And there's these really cool jet things uh, plugged on here. You can see the little thing spin like that. Um, they are really simple, but they are neat. It adds to the whole water idea. Uh, the mask is just the standard protector mask, this time in blue. Uh, other than that, she's got the chest piece there um, so overall pretty cool uh, no no I have no idea what her characters like because they've yet to uh, talk about it but as you can see uh, she's all prepared to get her weapon which is this double speared Gatling gun this thing's kind of cool um, it works almost like a propulsion system uh, kind of waiting in the water kind of thing and it does have three cannons, or the, the, the six-barreled cannon, and then the two uh, spears. So, it's it's pretty neat. Um, I don't really know what to think of it. The problem with the protector sets right now is there's no story backing to really explain some of this stuff. And it does leave us with, well, this is kind of a neat figure. But unfortunately, if you're not having her hold both sides, you have a red peg sticking out. And it looks weird if she's just kind of doing that. Um, it's, it's a little awkward. It has to be held by two hands and therefore, um, it's, that's kind of the pose. I've not been able to figure out any other poses for the protector of water to be in besides this. Other than that, it's a neat little figure. Um, it's just not too involved. If you've been paying attention in the last few videos, you should know that Golly and the protector of water can make a power up mode. So let's take a look at that. So here is Golly's power-up mode, once again leaving the protector completely unprotected, ironically. So it explains the awkward red pegs that were featured in the fins that had to connect here for this giant cannon. So Golly still can only pull off a limited amount of poses because it's got that dumb gun piece I don't like. The addition of the uh, jet booster things are pretty cool, but uh, considering this thing kind of needed them to move around, the uh, protector of water is going to be drowning now, um, or at least stuck at the bottom of the ocean. But as you can see, uh, it kind of pulls that off. The spear is awkwardly kind of placed back here, and you're left with three additional pieces. The two armor pieces from Golly, and the end of the staff. 
put the end of the staff over here to even it out a little bit. And we'll give these armor pieces to the protector of water. Um, so that they at least won't die. And they'll just be horribly mangled. Unfortunately, the power-up mode uh, is not as good as the one for Onua, nor Kapaka, nor Tahu. It limits the figure more than it helps it, really. Um, it just... It doesn't work as well, in addition to it's adding more weight to Golly, who's already got super loose legs. Um, so, there is that. The power-up mode is, once again, kind of pointless. So there's these silver skull spiders. I have already talked about skull spiders enough. So, overall, Golly, Master of Water, is unfortunately the weakest of the Toa. Um... The figure overall has a lot of cool ideas going for it, like the giant axe weapon, the cool spear and fin idea, but unfortunately, it's not backed up with the sturdy joint system. For whatever reason, this is the only Toa that has loose joints, um, and that's partially because of the weight of the objects placed on the figure. Uh, the, the axe is way too heavy for the arm joint. I tried giving that axe to Liwa, and it still caused an issue of being too heavy to hold up. So I feel like Golly was a, had a few misstepped uh, ideas. And the Protector of Water is kind of the same. You can really only pull off one pose with its gun. If you take that away, you can do a little bit more, but both figures are extremely limited in what they can do, and that's unfortunate because the rest of the line can do a lot. Let's say the rest of the Toa and Protectors can do a lot. But... Out of all six Toa, Golly's the weakest. Out of all six Protectors, Protector of Water's the weakest. Uh, this is the unfortunate fact. But things get better tomorrow when we take a look at the Master of Jungle and the Protector of Jungle. Till next time, be sure to check out HeroTaku.com for all your LEGO news and more. And tell us the sound saying, goodbye.